Tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. Um, I'm Christina Hoffner, I work for Catalyst in Wellington, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about how we can integrate Mahara ePortfolios with Moodle today. And um, as you can, uh, some of you have already seen me at other conferences, in particular Moodle modes or Mahara conferences, and now that I'm the Mahara project lead, and I have the for a pleasure to work with the development team um, at Catalyst together producing the open source ePortfolio system that integrates natively with Moodle. And um, that's what I'm going to show you today. Moodle, uh, Mahara, in contrast to Moodle, has only been in existence since 2006. Um, but that is also already quite a number of years. Actually, in September, we celebrated our 13th anniversary. And it's fantastic to see how the software has developed over the years. And it can be used in many, many different contexts. And that means it is useful for lifelong learning, really as a complement to Moodle. Moodle is for the course delivery oftentimes. Yes, we, have, we know that it's not just behavioral delivery, but also constructivism and social constructivism played a really large role in the development of Moodle. Yet Mahara still sits on the side of it, um, more as a personal learning environment, allowing students to decide what they want to keep of their learning content content um, and also include content from other areas that may not have come through Moodle. And so we see usage in schools at the tertiary level, but increasingly also in the professional organizations and also in the workplace. So similarly to Moodle, it can really follow a person throughout their learning life, um, guide them on their lifelong learning journey and um, be useful so that people can keep their learning, reflect on it, and then make use of it. While Mahara was developed as a personal learning environment, of course, when we're using it in an institutional context, we oftentimes come to that point where it then says, well, now we need to assess something so that the students get a grade or that a nurse or a teacher can have their professional registration done. So there's oftentimes that evaluative um, assessment element included. And so that's where we come in, in particular with the integration to Moodle to make this happen, to make it easy for people to not having to go off to another system and then through 10 or 20 steps get to the portfolio created and then kind of take the same journey back um, but make it as seamless as possible. And that is possible um, through the use of web services that we can send information from one way from Moodle into Mahara but then also from Mahara back into Moodle. So the idea is there not just to authenticate people from Moodle into Mahara but also to make use of assignments in Moodle, students create their work in Mahara, and then the grade flows back into Moodle. And that's kind of the workflow that I'm going to show you today using two different possibilities. Namely the external tool one, LTI. Um, many of you will know the MNET functionality, Moodle networking. Um, your Moodle might still be connected to the Mahara site that um, some of you are using that way. Um, that is kind of on the way out. We are looking into replacing that with LTI and web services in the wider sense um, in order to have it done in a more sustainable way, more modern way of using web services than the older Moodle networking protocol. And LTI is already built into Moodle, you know, as external tool. And there are the advantages of using it as, as a st stock standard Moodle. There's no plugin that needs to be installed. And it also pre-populates the connection details that you need in order to get to the Mahara site. So no teacher needs to know anything about consumer keys or consumer secrets or any of those more technical terms. And the feedback is all in Mahara, so everything stays with the portfolio. On the other hand, um, there's the possibility to use the Mahara Assignment Submission plugin 
that is n the updated LTI version is not yet in the Moodle plugin database because we are still actively working on finishing it up so that it can be published, but we are definitely getting closer. And the advantage there is that you can actually use the normal assignment activity instead of the external tool activity. And that makes it possible that you have more grading options available because you can use the rubric, you can use the marking workflow, you can use all the normal tools that you regularly use for assignments, whereas with the external tool, you pretty much only have the possibility to send a grade back into Moodle. But oftentimes, a grade is not really enough, but we'd like to use a rubric to give more um, and better feedback to students. The nice thing about the plugin is that all feedback is in Moodle like you're used to, that everything is in the gradebook. And it is also more configurable because it is part of the assignment um, functionality. So what do these two options now look like? Well, let's take a look at LTI first. So the teacher sets up an external tool in Moodle, creates the external tool activity, selects it, and then um, fills in the details, and oftentimes that's what I mean with the pre-configuration. It can be already set up in Moodle on the site administration side, so that a teacher only needs to select the, um, the application where it needs to go to. And then the only difference to the authentication is that grades need to be accepted. Saves and is done. Now the student can come in clicks the link to the activity, and then it takes a little bit. My internet connection was a bit on the slow side when I did those screen grabs, so it was a bit slow. And then selects the portfolio that they would like to submit for assessment purposes. They can, of course, also still first create that portfolio, but um, if it's already there, then they can simply select it. Now it's time for the teacher to get to the grading of that portfolio. Again, they click the activity and are taken immediately into Mahara and then see the screen where they can see which student has already submitted their assignment. Click the grade link and are then taken to the portfolio itself where they can review the portfolio take a look at what the student had written, look at the reflections, give feedback at the bottom of the page or on individual artifacts, and then in the end can choose a grade between zero and 100. The zero to 100 is a limitation by LTI, unfortunately. That's the only grade that we can give, but in Moodle it can then be transferred into um, what you would normally see. And then once the grade, or once the grading has finished, um, both students and teachers can see it in the gradebook. That is the functionality which we are extending now for the October version of Mahara, um, namely that you'll also be able to resubmit assignments that have been so far missing. Um, and as quite important, especially at the treasury level, in case the students still need to make some changes to it. So very straightforward process with a number of limitations, in particular, in particular in terms of how you can interact, giving feedback um, and use the gradebook, and especially also if you have mark different markers assigned to assignments or to a certain group of students. The external tool is not really the easiest way to deal with because you do not have that marking workflow that you could set up with a normal assignment. So now let's take a look at that one instead using a plugin for it, which I said will be available. We will announce it once we have it in the Moodle plugin database. Um, so far, we've been testing it with YTMATA DHB and um, just kind of looking into now from that customized version going to a generic version that can be made available to the entire community. So there, teacher sets up the assignment, and instead of choosing the external tool, um, the teacher chooses the assignment activity as normal. And once the plugin is installed, of course after giving an assignment name, then 
there is the option of the Mahara's assignment submission. Instead of choosing the file submissions or online text or any of the other possibilities that you have. And now here comes the thing that, at least in this version of the plugin, in the initial version, um, the URL needs to be put in as well as two values so that we can say, yes, for sure, this is the connection to this particular Mahara site. Um, normally, there would be numbers and letters, but in order not to divulge those, I just put in some a sample text. And then you can also decide whether pages should stay locked just for the duration of the activity or for eternity. And that's it. The activity is available. Now the student goes in and submits their portfolio, clicks the link, and as usual goes to the edit submission screen. And now they can select the portfolio page that they would like to submit for this particular assignment. They can, of course, also review it beforehand um, and or go to Mahara itself and set it up if they don't already have their portfolio page made. Then we are becoming a teacher again who assesses the portfolio, again goes into the normal screen for the assignments that the teacher sees and can then click the link to the portfolio, review the portfolio, scroll through it, the teacher still has the possibility to give feedback on the portfolio itself. However, um, more summative feedback will most likely go into the Moodle grade book, um, where you normally have the feedback comments. And then that feedback as well as the grade is available directly in Moodle. And here I'm only showing the very basic um, assessment possibilities, but you can also use a rubric, marking workflow, marking sheet, and things like that, and therefore have really the entire gamut of, of editing of assignment possibilities available to you. All of that work has been made possible thanks to Waitemata DHB, um, in particular the Tabitha uh, Parker and Miriam Lickler, who are also fantastic organizers of this event today. And the developer from our Ended Catalyst um, is Matt Clarkson, who has been um, doing the brunt work of changing the plugin um, over from MNET to LTI, making it work, or M MNET and web services actually. It's because we are not just using the LTI web services, but the wider range of it. And who has also been looking into getting it to work on my site here so that I can show that to you today. And this is really just a very brief look into the possibilities of connecting a Mahara portfolio. That's where students have full control over it. They can decide what they want to put into their portfolio, what they want to present, and also how they want to present it, because they can decide to have images, video there. They are not just bound to a document that they upload, but they can create an entire page or entire website and then submit that into Moodle for assessment purposes in order to still have kind of bridge both worlds, namely that they have their learning evidence collected in their own space, yet also get assessed for formal uh, institutional requirements and therefore have these possibilities available to them in order to also allow the institution to work better with portfolios. And they are those two options of using the SOC standard LTI functionality or the soon to be made available plugin. And if you are already a university or a tertiary in general or workplace using MNET to connect Moodle, uh, Mahara to Moodle, then there are ways of converting over to LTI and we'd be happy to help you or give some guidance to you so that you can achieve that. Thanks.